Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So what we're going to be looking at today, and this came from a request from one of my subscribers, was to uh, to do a video on how to kind of migrate or do a migration from like a previous voicemail system um, like AAM or CMM or Audix or any voicemail system really that you can extract data out. Now when I say migration, it's kind of a little bit of a a vague expression I suppose because we're not going to be migrating all of the uh, the users mailboxes with all of the uh, you know of all of like the voicemail messages and stuff like that we're not going to be able to do that but what we can do is we can we can import a load of users in bulk so let's pretend that I've got a via or a message in and what I've been able to do is extract all of these users from my via or message in version 7 or 6.3 or whatever it is. It doesn't really make any difference what the old voicemail system was, providing that you can extract the data from it. Whether that's running a report and copying and pasting that into Excel and creating it as a CSV or it doesn't really make any difference, providing you can get this information out as a bare minimum. So like first name the last name and the mailbox number or extension number then you can do this quite easily so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my UC app application and I'm going to log in real quick and I'm going to show you that none of these users actually exist at the moment so if I go into my mailbox structure and my lab users although these ones do exist we're going to get rid of these and the reason that it's still there is because I actually recorded this video about 15 minutes ago and for some reason my video capture software didn't work and uh, so yeah I'm having to do it again but anyway these are the users we're going to import first name last name extension number these are from AAM before we go into detail about that I just want to point out that these users do not exist anywhere these are not real people at all it's basically just random names that have been generated that have been put into csv with a um with a number next to it so what we can do from here is we've got our csv file that we're going to pretend came from aam or cmm or audix or cisco unity any one of those and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the start menu go to avi messaging and ldap import tool this file lives on the desktop and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go file, import mailboxes and I'm going to select my file. So user import and then basically what we're going to do is uh, we're going to um, go preview and we're going to map these columns to the stuff here. just make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to follow so these are actually already already set I'm just going to reset these so you can see what I've do, I mean, I'm doing so column 1 is the first name column 2 is the last name and column 3 is the number so what we can do is we can say well I want this first name here to be column one so just click that up there or you can double click it here and just put the number in manually but it's a lot easier just to click that and go there so that's going to be my first name column two is going to be my last name column three is also going to be my username my mailbox number and the extension number and what we can do at this stage is we can click on import because that is these are the three pieces of information that I need to create a basic mailbox. Now obviously you can go into more detail if you have information that you can add to your CSV file for email and other bits and pieces then you can also add that but you know this is like the, the basic minimum bits of information that you need to be able to do a bulk import of users from uh, AAM or CMM or any of those other two or other, other lots. So what we can do now is we've, we've set all of that stuff up Number one is going to be first name, number two is going to be last name, and then column three is going to be used for the username, mailbox, and extension. 
what we can do now is we can click on import and what it's done is it's found you know, it's basically read the file and it said that well, we're going to put all of this stuff here that mailbox is going to be that it's going to be the extension number so that's how it'll work but at this moment in time you're probably thinking well what good is this because i still have to assign the company feature group organization unit and pbx node manually and i'd say yeah okay well that's a fair point but you don't have to do it like that you can select multiple users or you can select all of them by doing control a and then what you can do is you can go up to here where it says assign mailbox numbers and you can say okay well all of these ones i've selected they're all going to be in my default company they're all going to be in the uk users feature group they're all in the lab users department they all share the same pbx node we don't have to worry about this desktop capabilities you can um you know select it if you want if there need to be like you know messaging collaboration or fax or standard then you can you can assign it but you don't have to so what we can do now is we can go to assign and you'll see it's populated all of this other information out here now before i go ahead and save this and write this to the database i'm just going to show you that this none of these people exist i'm not pulling the wall over anyone's eyes or trying to mug anyone off keep in mind that when you add a user through here manually so when you go I don't know, new mailbox. If you don't specify username and password and there it takes the default one from this company. So under here, it will take the default from here. When you create a user manually through the UC admin or through the through the, the web interface. When you use the LDAP tool, it actually bypasses that mechanism and it doesn't sign them a password or a an application pin number or anything like that so what we've done is we've created a mailbox template but in here i've called it password stuff or we could call it password assignment and i'm basically saying that when this password or this mailbox template for password assignment is set it's going to use this password or this pin number 2580 and this application password of welcome one two three dollar it's going to assign that to those users now because those users are bypassing the default mechanism we have to have to assign them that so what i'm going to do is go back into the ldap import tool just have a quick flick over these yep they all look fine that's how i want it to be and what we can do is when we click on save it will start writing these mailboxes to the database so if we go back into lab users what you'll see is says users in here that are starting to appear and it's doing them one by one how cool is that it's pretty good right if you go back in here it takes a while for it to pop back up when it's busy And you'll see as it's working its way through here. And now we've got more users in here. Like how cool is that? It's pretty cool, right? And what we can do is once all the users have been assigned from that import tool, It's a little bit slow so I do apologize for it kind of hanging around still doing stuff but anyway let's just pretend that the um, the import was finished so I can show you this next bit what we can do is we can select all of those users or we can select select whichever ones that we want and what we can do is we can say well apply mailbox template password assignment and what it's done now is it's assigned the password for the application and for also logging into the voicemail to all those users so when they dial in now we can do that again we can just go assign mailbox template password assignment and that's what it's done and if we go back here i think this little thing should have finished what it's doing it's a little bit slow 
and it's working away. But yeah, so that's how you import users from another mailbox system, another voicemail system. So that's pretty cool. It'll save you a lot of time. And yep, yeah, once again, if you enjoyed that, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. Um, let me know what other videos you want to see, and I hope that found that was found helpful by anyone who needs to use it. Anyway, you guys stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.